On September 17, 2019, Kelsey Piper wrote an article for Vox claiming that without the financial backing of America's richest individuals, the abortion industry would be virtually non-existent. If you could snap your fingers and rid the world of billionaire philanthropists instantly, hundreds of millions of women worldwide would lose access to contraception. And in the U.S., only the rich would have access to legal abortion. The abortion industry has always relied on financial support from outside sources, and billionaire philanthropists are one of the largest sources of that support. They have driven the expansion and evolution of abortion from its inception, spending many billions of dollars not just on the funding of abortions themselves, but in legal battles, PR campaigns, research, and development. Without the financial support of these billionaires, abortion would not be nearly as prevalent as it is. The top backers are the foundations of Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, William Hewlett, and David Packard. Bill Gates made his billions as the founder of the software company Microsoft and is currently the second richest man in the world. Warren Buffett's known as one of the most successful investors of all time and is the fourth richest man in the world. Bill Hewlett and David Packard were the founders of the IT company Hewlett Packard, or HP. Other notable donors include the hedge fund tycoon George Soros, the Ford Foundation, as in Henry Ford of the Ford Motor Company, and the Rockefeller Foundation, as in John D. Rockefeller, the world's first billionaire. The Gates Foundation tends to focus its funding abroad and is the largest single contributor to private so-called reproductive health care funding globally, giving roughly $4.6 billion. It has also spent about $278 million in this category in the United States. Behind Gates, Warren Buffett's foundation, the Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, granted $3.4 billion globally and is the largest donor for U.S.-based funding, awarding about $1.5 billion in the reproductive health category and $565 million in the reproductive rights category between 2003 and 2018. Hewlett's foundation gave roughly $240 million in reproductive health in the U.S., and Packard's gave about $181 million to health and $85 million to rights. So, what interest do these incredibly wealthy individuals have in abortion? Most will cite women's rights, female empowerment. However, their actual objective is one they are less eager to draw attention to. Population control. The Rockefeller family, the grandfather of all wealthy American families, was influential in the development of the American eugenics movement of the 1920s. This movement saw the rise of compulsory sterilization laws and later served as the basis for the eugenics movement in Nazi Germany. Following the atrocities of World War II, John D. Rockefeller III would go on to create the Population Council in order to stimulate, encourage, promote, conduct, and support significant activities in the broad field of population. Frederick Osborne, the second president of Population Council after Rockefeller and founding member of the American Eugenic Society once said, birth control and abortion are turning out to be the great eugenic advances of our time. Population Council's third president, Frank W. Notstein, was also a member of the American Eugenic Society, and his successor, Bernard Berelson, once suggested that if voluntary birth control methods were unsuccessful, the government should place a fertility control agent in the water supply of urban neighborhoods. The mother will have too much to do. She'll be tired and cross, and her health will suffer. The children will be sickly and unhappy with little hope for the future. This picture can be true for countless families if the number of children born is left to chance. But fortunately, this need not happen anymore. Today, things have changed. Modern science has given us a key that makes possible a new kind of personal freedom, family planning. Today, family planning can be accomplished by several effective methods merely by taking pills or using simple devices. Today, the Population Council is alive and well, and American elites continue to have a vested interest in population control. 
The Population Council itself has received funding from the Gates Foundation, the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, George Soros' Open Society Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Ford Foundation. One issue that really grabbed me as, as urgent uh, was, were issues related to population, uh, reproductive health. When our foundation first started up, it was focused on reproductive health. That was the main thing we did because I thought, you know, population growth in poor countries is the biggest problem they face. You've got to help mothers who want to limit family size have the tools and education to do that. The problem is that the population is growing the fastest where people are less able to deal with it. So it's in the very poorest places. In 1997, Warren Buffett's daughter, Susie Buffett, told the Chronicle of Philanthropy, population control was what my father has always believed was the biggest and most important issue. So that will be the foundation's focus. Buffett biographer Roger Lowenstein wrote that Warren had a Malthusian dread of overpopulation's potential negative effects. David Packard stated in an interview that population control was one of the most important questions to be dealt with, and that unless populations were limited, other problems would become unmanageable. Packard's son once said, my father felt that all the progress we had made toward a better society was going to be destroyed if there were too many people. Today, efforts to expand the reach and impact of abortion have been focused on the abortion pill. And it is these same billionaire philanthropists that have fueled this effort. The patent rights to the abortion pill were donated to the Population Council by a French pharmaceutical company in 1994. The council subsequently formed the pharmaceutical company Danko Laboratories to manufacture and market the pill in the United States. Danko Laboratories has been shrouded in secrecy from its inception, refusing to release the names of its investors and executives. Furthermore, it has been shielded by the FDA, who in an unprecedented maneuver concealed the name and location of the manufacturer of the pill, as well as the names of the experts who reviewed the pill. In spite of its secrecy, we do know that Buffett, Packard, and Soros Foundations have all invested in Danko Laboratories. Genuity Health Project, which sponsored U.S. abortion pill clinical trials, is also funded by Gates, Packard, Hewlett, the Rockefeller Foundation, Population Council, and other anonymous donors. Additionally, the family planning organization called DKT International, which distributes the abortion pill internationally, is funded, once again, by Gates, Buffett, Packard, and Hewlett. Near the end of her article, Kelsey Piper from Vox poses this question. Do philanthropists care about women's health care for the sake of those women, or just as a form of population control? To answer your question, Kelsey, these philanthropists only care about your right to choose as long as you choose what they think is right. The fact is that the abortion movement has always been fueled by ultra-wealthy individuals as a means to control global populations, promoting the killing of children and exploitation of women under the guise of reproductive health and women's rights. <laughs>